All right. Next Thursday is the 248th anniversary of the birth of this country, Independence Day. <laughs> and we all know the story uh, from school days how uh, in Philadelphia on July 4th, 1776, 56 delegates from the 13 original colonies met in the second con the, the, well, the second con con Congregational Congress in, or yeah, in order to approve a Declaration of Independence written by Thomas Jefferson. Now, it was not really a hot, humid July 4th, uh, con contrary to what we were told, and only two delegates signed it on July 4th. But despite that, it was a long and arduous process to get us even that far on that day. And here's, here's the story of how it went. The First Continental Congress had met in September, October of 1774 to figure out what to do after the Boston Tea Party when Britain came and blocked the harbor and uh, passed some intolerable acts, as the colonists said. And uh, that didn't go too well. And it resulted in the battles of Lexington and Concord. And then the Second Continental Congress needed to meet. And they met May 10th, 1775, to raise an army and figure out how to pay for it. And uh, that army uh, needed to gain the cooperation of the French eventually. So uh, it became necessary for the colonists to actually become a separate country from the British Empire, Great Britain. Therefore, on June the 7th, 1776, Richard Henry Lee, who was the head of the Virginia delegation and had been instructed by the Virginia legislature to present to Congress a resolution declaring us independent of the great Britain monster that had <laughs> persecuted these colonists. Well, Congress delayed a vote on that they wanted to think about it because that was a thing of great consequence. And they appointed a committee. What else would politicians do but appoint a committee to study something? So they appointed a committee to be led by Thomas Jefferson and five other leaders of the colonists uh, to work up that declaration, which would be presented if the vote on Lee's resolution, which declared independence, uh, passed. Well, then it was on July 2nd, not July 4th, that the crucial vote of Congress was actually taken on Lee's resolution and actually was the vote that made us a separate country. That caused John Adams to say this, the second day of July 1776 will be the most memorable day in the history of America. Now Jefferson, who actually wrote the Declaration of Independence for the committee, then presented the, the, the declaration to the Congress, and it was passed. Uh, 12 of the 13 colonies approved. New York abstained. Then July 4th actually turned out to be a cool and pleasant day. Uh, John Hancock, president of the Congress, and Charles Thompson, secretary, were the ones who signed that day, but none of the other 56 uh, dele delegates from the colonies signed on that day. John Hancock wanted his signature to be seen clearly by King George, so he signed in a kind of big and bold script that we remember. Then Congress ordered that the declaration be embossed on parchment on July 19th and finally was signed by 56 of the delegates on August the 2nd, some of whom had not been present either on July, July 2nd or July the 4th. So we remember and honor and celebrate with gratitude each year the work of those government leaders who together as patriots united us as a nation. We very much need those kind of patriots today to keep us united as a nation. The declaration did not receive immediate attention on July the 4th, communication being much more difficult then than it is now. John Adams didn't write an account of July the 4th at all actually. Jefferson took a break they must have been exhausted from the whole process by then, just glad to fall over that finish line and have it presented that far. Uh, so it was not actually a 
printed until Friday the next day, did not make the local newspaper until Saturday, was not read publicly in Philadelphia until late on uh, Monday, or noon on Monday it was, and it finally reached Washington's army in New York late on Tuesday, July the 9th, where it was received by cheering troops, and that huzzas, you know, three loud huzzas. And they were so excited, they, they ran down Broadway, decapitated a, a statue of King George, took that molten head and later melted it into 42,000 musket balls to throw back at the British. <laughs> This then is the history of the, the long process by which we became a country. And we're freed, freed from the English Empire and from King George, and now are the United States of America. From the beginning, <laughs> from the beginning, our democracy has really been the envy of the world. And that's kind of obvious because if you think about it and you look, look it up, most of the countries of the world like to have something about democracy in the name of their country, whether or not they actually practice democracy. It, it is so important an idea in the human heart and the human mind that we live as free people with those, that liberty and uh, so that we, we have enjoyed for so long. So enjoy the 248th birthday of the country next week with your family and your friends. Share memories of the joys of life that you've had living in this country. And think of the patriots who made it possible and the patriots who still keep us free when you see those red glares of the rockets going into the sky.